We're having an, uh, a downloading service after our seminar to help you uh, reach out and get these gifts that you're supposed to have. We already went over this, but the Holy Ghost picks out the gifts he wants you to have based on who you are as a person. It's not like a drive through I like this, that, and this, that. I like Now, m many times, the Holy Ghost will put that desire in your spirit, man, deep down in your guts, and it matches up with the gift he wants to give you, which is, ha I've seen that happen a lot. But you can't just order them off the sheet. He picks them out based on a, a billion different things. Is uh, how he does it, I have no idea. But it's based on who you are as a person, how, how, what you're comfortable with, what kind of personality you have, your, your temperament, your, your, your IQ. Your, I'm sure he considers everything way more than I can. So he picks these gifts out for you, and then when you're born again, they're already in there. Boom! Lord. I know him. I've seen him before. <laughs> He's not right? I don't do that to total strangers. Why? Lawsuits. A lawsuit. They're already in there, but the problem is they're court. After you're saved and you become a born again Christian, the discipleship programs of churches are so weak. They're so weak. Volume, volume go up. The discipleship programs of churches are so weak that the person most Christians nowadays backslide. Almost all of them backslide. Sooner or later, they're gone. Why? The discipleship are so poor that these gifts that the person already has are corked. But once you uncork them, they start just flowing out of your mind. Amazing. You already have them in there. They're just not, to use our terms, manifesting. That's the problem. That's what we're going to do tonight after the teaching. Okay? We're going to try to help you manifest the gifts of God that are already in there. He already picked them out, and when you got born again, boop, they were downloaded. They're in your spirit, man. Ron? Yeah. They're right in there. But they're plugged. What do we do here at the House of Union? This is an unplugging service. It's a spiritual roto rooter. <laughs> We're trying to help you get rid of whatever that plug is. What could it be? Anger, bitterness, hurt, wounds, whatever it is. A little cork has to be removed. And once it is, the gifts start flowing quickly, usually the same day. In most cases, it starts flowing the same day. It just starts going because God's more anxious to see you get your gifts than you are to have them because the world's going to hell in a handbasket, and that's the last thing he wants. The Bible says that God wants every person saved and every person healed. The fact they're not saved and healed is not his part. That's the problem on, on this end. We're trying to get this thing fixed here so we can all get healed. And that's how the gospel works. That's before you get all your theology and doctrine worked out, and then you become virtually useless. <laughs> okay, the greatest gift of all of those was the one that wasn't on the list, and it's this one. Paul takes a whole chapter on this, the most important of the 19 gifts. And if you don't have... This agape love, your ship's going to wreck, to use Paul's term. You're going to end up shipwrecked. Because love will carry you through betrayal. <clears throat> if you get into the ministry, I mean even the bus ministry, people are going to betray you. They're going to let you down. They're going to shove a machete right through your back. And it's going to happen. And you, you're not going to be able to avoid it. There's no way to get out of it. 
And if you don't have agape love, you'll never get, you'll, you'll crash and burn. You'll take an offense. And in John 16, verse 1, Jesus was getting ready to leave, and he gave his disciples instructions. And the first thing he said, I told you all these things, verse 1, so that you would not become offended. The Greek word is scandalizo. It means to be appalled at something. <gasps> oh, because when you get offended at something, you take in a wound. When you take a wound into your soul, you develop negative emotions. Once you develop negative emotions, it blocks your anointing and ruins your discernment. Once you take in a wound from being scandalized or offended at something somebody did to you, your ministry You have no chance of surviving. Everybody stabbed Jesus in the back. Everybody barbecued him. They all left him. Every one of them betrayed him. I don't know how many people he had healed, but it had to be in six figures, maybe seven. Who knows? There wasn't one of them there at Calvary standing there. They all let him go. And Jesus knew the gospel would have never gotten past Elm Street in Jerusalem had the disciples taken offenses. Do you know why he told them that? He knew persecution was coming. And persecution gives people offenses. As soon as somebody turns against you and stabs you in the back, when you did him a good turn, an offense flares up. There it is. It's this black demonic cloud standing right in front of you. Oh, can you believe they did that? You broke your back for them. You gave them money. You let them in your home. You backed your truck up and you moved their lazy butt six times. You know what they did to you? <laughs> Brother Mike, you're making this stuff up. Am I really? I don't think so. Making this up. No, no, no. You got screwed and you did them a good turn. Jesus said, I told you everything. I've taught you all this. I spent three or four years you showing you everything I showed you how to heal I showed you how to cast out demons I showed you all these gifts one of you neon lights there's the gift of wisdom boom there's the gift of knowledge boom I taught you all these things why so you wouldn't become offended and lose everything I taught you Do you understand that if you got an offense in your soul right now, your future is cooked. You have no chance of winning. None. And you're innocent. They are at fault. And you lose your ministry. You're not listening. They screwed you. They're 100% at fault. Jury trial, verdict, boom. They go to jail. You lose your ministry. Why? Because you took an offense at what they did. There goes your gifts. There goes your peace. There goes your joy. Rot it out. Preach it, brother. Preach it. Why? Because you were hurt because you did something good for someone and they did you a bad turn. Jesus said, the gospel won't make it out of town if you take offenses. That's what he told him, John 16, 1. If you don't believe me, read it yourself. Scandalizo, it's where I get, we get our English word, scandal, scandalize. That's, well, anyway, the biggest gift of all was this one, and he took a whole section on it. Fantastic, and I'm going to uh, skip it. <laughs> but... 
Paul did say one thing that was like mind-boggling. Are you ready? This one fried my brain when I read it the first time. He goes through the list here and he says, now, if I have all these gifts, he says, some, but I don't have any love, what am I? Okay? Now, here's what's mind-boggling about it. Not that. It, what's mind-boggling about it, what he's saying is you can have these gifts and not have any love. You can have gifts of the Spirit, not have love. Do you know why? You don't get them through love. They're faith downloads. You can have love here, get your gifts. And then, tragically, something happens. You take offenses, you get hurt, something, and you lose your love. You still have your gift. Why? Because once God gives you a gift, he don't take it from you. You still have it. So Paul's saying, look, if you're healing everybody, you can heal everybody, you can have the gift of wisdom, you can have all these wonderful gifts, and guess what you amount to? Nothing. <laughs> what? Yeah, I told you. It didn't register with me either. You're not getting it either, are you? You're going to have to read that about 50 times. I read it 52. You mean to tell me? I, I couldn't believe it. I just assumed like an ignorant puce, puce scum Christian sitting there, feed me. I just assumed, which is what I used to be. I just sat there and wanted somebody to feed me like a bird on Sunday morning. Where is it? <laughs> See, I just assumed that if you had this gift and my pastor or your pastor invited this hot shot, big shot in here and he was demonstrating this, I assumed like an idiot that he loved me. No, that's not necessarily true. In the eyes of God, he might have healed 10 people. Well, what was he? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Love. Number one gift. Spent the whole section on it. Right? And then this verse here makes plenty of sense now. It never did before. Matthew 7. On judgment day, hey, Lord, didn't I? Blah, 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 blah. Dude, who are you? Oops, skip that one. That's a guy burning up. Uh, you can give your body to be burned, the Bible says, and amount to nothing. You can give everybody every nickel you have and amount to nothing. You can make every sacrifice in the world. you amount to nothing. Why? Because you didn't have... All right, I'm skipping this section as well. All right. How do we get the gifts? Here we go. Ready? Let's stay here for a second. How the heck does this work? Okay. Now, the reason you're asking me that is because a light went off in your head. I'm not getting any younger. Another light went off in your head. You were reflecting. You reflected over your life. You know why it was your, why you did that? Because it's, it's the only life you have. And what happened? Most of your life has been wasted. How'd that happen? The devil stole it from you. And you've had enough. You're sick of it. You lost too many good years to go forward from tonight with what you walked in that door with. You've had enough. You're sick of it. You're sick of church. You're sick of religion. You're sick of people going home sick. You're, you're tired of the whole thing. Chuck it. And you want to do something about it. I'm reading your mind. 
That's not one of the gifts. Now, how do I get the gifts? Let's go. Number one, the arrogant. The Holy Ghost passes right over them. People that are proud, vain, arrogant, get nothing from God. Nothing. If you think you look great, we've got a problem. You've got a vanity problem, okay? If it takes you four hours to get fixed to go to church, please get here for deliverance tonight. You've got a vanity issue. What's causing that? Deep-seated fear. Deep-seated insecurity causes you to spend four hours in the bathroom. Unless you've got diarrhea or something. I'm talking about when you're fixing yourself up, it's all deep-seated fear. It's the sense of insecurity. What will they, who's going to look at me? How, are they, how am I perceived? Not realizing that, hey, Father likes you no matter what you look like. He doesn't care. Now, should you show up? No, that's not the point of that. It's the vanity issue. You're, going to, you're not going to get a, your gifts, okay? You've got to learn to have a contrite heart, a broken spirit. That's the kind the Holy Ghost likes the best. Number two, if you casually approach the gifts, you cannot have them. You must see them as priceless treasures. You must see them as, my God, this is great. You can't look at them and go, you know, uh, let's see here. Furs or gift of healing? Let me think about that. Listen, if you've got to think about it, you're not getting it. Go to furs. The, these gifts can't be bought with money. Not millions. Trump has no, none of these gifts. Not, not one of them. Why? You must zelao. You must Crave them. Covet earnestly. Zalao. To passionately crave something. Have you ever passionately craved something? What was it? Uh, a pet? A uh, Lottery ticket, uh, a relationship, love. You know what it is to crave something. You don't need me to explain it to you. If you're casual with these things and it's okay that you don't have them, you're, you're oops, oh, we're done. Why? These things are priceless gifts, and God has to be able to trust you with them. If you're proud, arrogant, or vain, you're going to use that gift to do something. Generate money, get some glory, have somebody look at it, whatever the situation is. See, The Holy Ghost is not going to buy that. You have to crank up your craver. If somebody claims they have a gift and it's out of control, that's demonic. One day I was at the altar weeks ago praying for a gal, and she, her hand was shaking like this uncontrollably. And I said, why is your hand shaking there? Because I was praying for her, and, and I couldn't get any spirits to come out of the woman. So I stopped to try and figure out what was wrong. And I said, why is your hand shaking? Like? She said, well, the, it shakes like that every time the anointing comes on me. I said, well, can you, can you stop it? No, not when the anointing comes on me. I said, ma'am, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's a, you're infected with a spirit. You've got a demon. She looked at me like I had fallen off a tuna boat in Yuma. <laughs> Well, I don't, I'm going to have to pray about that. And I said, ma'am, please pray about that. Why is that? Well, because if you can't control the gift, it's demonic. 
The spirits want to control you. And if you can't control what you're doing, it's usually demonic. Because the spirits of the prophets are subject to, not the church, but the prophets. You have control over your gift. That's why Paul said, backing up two lessons, the gift of tongues, you just have three. Okay, the prophecies, no, everybody doesn't prophesy. If you get a, a revelation, you just share it with the Lord and be quiet. Why is he telling them that? To avoid confusion in the church and letting us know that your gifts are under your control. That's why you have to crave them to get them. Because they don't just fall out of your pocket like keys. You know, the Lord, oops, I dropped the gift of healing. Well, I don't want that. I'll just boop. Oh, it's yours. No. It's not going to work like that. You're not going to get lucky and get a gift. If you're craving that gift and you have a broken heart and you're humble and you've got a servant's heart, Holy Ghost goes, wait a minute here. This dude's trustworthy. This guy is ready. I can trust you with that gift. You're not going to use Ministers are servants, not users. They get used, but they don't take offense at it. I hope, so I hope they're not supposed to take offense at it. Notice the two English words, covet, desire, same Greek word, same thing. You've got to crank this thing up. That's me breathing. All right. Isaiah chapter 10, the anointing will... In the Hebrew, it actually says, turns off the heavy burdens and ties up the yokes. Glory to God. Now, remember, once God gives you one of these gifts, he never takes Never does. So, if you backslide, if you misuse them, whatever, not going to take them from you. When I was a kid, I took something back from a friend of mine I had given him. And my mother got on me about it. I was little at the time, and she says to me, uh, do you want to become an Indian giver? And I s didn't know what the heck she was talking about. I had no idea. I didn't know it years later. You know, we, we gave the Indians all, and then we took it back. And uh, God is not a, what they used to say, an Indian giver, where the government takes us, gives you and takes your land from you. He doesn't do that. So that means if you got the gift of tongues or the gift of healing, if you're robbing a bank and you run out and see a sick person, you can pray for them, they'll get healed, you run to the getaway car. Wow. Why? The gifts and the clasis, God's heavenly invitation to you, he's giving it to you, he will not withdraw it. Isn't that wonderful? And, if, if, and, and by the way, he's omniscient, which means he knows the future now, right? So when you backslide in the future, he already knew you was going to do that. But because you had a broken heart now, because you craved the gifts now, God honored you now and gave you, boom, the download. He doesn't eliminate something now because his omniscience sees something 20 years from now. Okay? Do that. Meet the conditions now. It's not a factor. He'll, he'd, he'll save everybody in Maricopa County even though, let's say, half of them backslide in three years. Just because he knows in omniscience they're going to backslide three years now, I don't. I don't know nothing. I have no idea what's going on tomorrow. I remember what happened yesterday. That's not a factor. He'll save you now. You meet the conditions now, he makes his move now. Uh, am I helping anybody? God, once you... 
your ticket to these gifts is you must develop your glossa. See? Thursday night, we have a glossa meeting here. And, uh, you know, gosh, five, six, eight people come here, and all they do is speak in tongues for as long as they want to. What are they doing? Why are they doing that? Well, they're building up their faith. They are using this gift as a conduit to download the gifts. Speaking in tongues is so neglected in our society. Pathetic. Why? Because they don't understand the value of it. I had a relative give me a rare silver dollar. Oh, here, you can have it. I said, well, this thing's worth a lot of money. Oh, I didn't. If you don't know what the value of the coin is, the coin doesn't have any real, that much value to you. It's a big coin, that's all I know. Hey, wait a minute here. That thing. So people don't spend any time glossa because they don't, in their minds, see any value to it because they didn't read these scriptures to get all the value of it. So they remain spiritually ignorant and giftless. I might add, giftless. How, do you, how can you fix it? You can start tonight. There's your conduit. There are your gifts. They will be downloaded. I'm going to skip this section. I went through the whole book of Acts, and I listed every place where the gifts materialized. Okay, which I'm not going to go through tonight. There they are, tongues, prophecy, knowledge, wisdom, miracles, and healings. There's the verses. Discernment, faith, and fruit of the Spirit. Then in this section 9, uh, Jesus demonstrated the, most of the gifts of the Spirit. The two he didn't demonstrate were. Thank you. Exactly correct. Two of them he didn't demonstrate because they weren't needed at that time. But he had all the other gifts. No tongues, no interpretation of tongues. Now, uh, I'm going to skip this section except for this verse. Jesus had uh, something different that you and I do not have. Okay? And here's what it is. The great John the Baptist, the history's greatest preacher, explained it to us. He's talking about Jesus in John chapter 3, and he makes a fascinating statement. He whom God sent, meaning Christ, speaks the words of God, the rhema word. Every little thing God said, every, even if it's just one word, Christ spoke it. Why? Listen to this. God does not give the spirit by metron. And the English word is meter. Portion, the distance. Jesus was the only person ever lived that had the gifts of the Spirit without. Everybody else has them in a metron, a portion. Yeah. Does that make sense? So if you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, everybody got healed. Everybody got delivered that wanted to be. The ones that didn't, of course, didn't get, didn't get anything. But everybody that wanted to be healed got healed. And there was 100% victory in every case why the, Jesus cut the Holy Ghost loose from A to Z and he had no limitations See? the Holy Ghost can do anything anywhere except when we limit him okay? and Jesus did not he had all the gifts as John said without a measure or a meter see and what is a portion or a meter meter it's like a pizza with one slice. There's two. This preacher may have two slices. That one may have three. Jesus had all the pizza. He had the whole pizza. And no one ever has had the whole pizza ever again. I don't believe anybody can have it personally. But if you know somebody that has the whole pizza, I would love to meet them. They can speak here every week. <laughs> okay, let's skip through Jesus using all the gifts. Sorry about that. He had miracles, discernment, wisdom. I went through the, the texts, and uh, there he healed somebody with uh, dropsy. 
What is dropsy? Elephantitis. Uh, wisdom and so on. Let's get to the next section here, please. He had the gift of faith, miracles, discernment. is amazing. Oh, what are you supposed to be doing? Let's stop here. Ready? Wow. My time goes so fast. <clears throat> what are you supposed to be doing? Number one, you already have... God has picked out for you to have. They're in your spirit, man. They're just not manifesting. There's a cork in your bottle. All we have to do is uncork that bottle, and you can have these gifts that God has picked out for you. They could be one, two, three, five, six. I don't know. It's none of my business. That's between you and God. You have these gifts already. They're in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost lives in your spirit, man. You have him in there, and he has these gifts picked out for you. This one, that one, and this one, theoretically. Boom, boom, boom. They're already in there. They're right there. They're just not manifesting. So what must you do? What must you do? Well, this is all God doing it. No, it isn't. This is a partnership between you and the Lord. You do your part. He does his part. Salvation is a partnership. God does his part. You do your part. You don't just walk down the street and boom, you're saved. Okay, that's an alien abduction. That's not salvation. Boom, we're gone. Oh, God. That doesn't happen. You've got to do your part. You've got to be willing to repent. You've got to be willing to surrender. You must receive Christ as not just Savior and go to church and then backslide. No, Lord and Savior. See, you must do your part. You want the baptism of the Holy Ghost? You've got to do your part. Well, God won't fill me with the Spirit. I can't speak in tongues. What have you been doing? Nothing. I just sit there and do nothing. Listen, you'll be sitting there to you dead of two heart attacks if you don't start moving your mouth and cranking your praise and letting that Spirit flow through you. You've got to do something instead of just sit there and stare at somebody. You have to stir up the gift that, where is it at? At a Walmart? No, dude, it's in there. It's already in there. I'm not going to Target. Hi, Mormons, can I have a gift? No. You can have a president, but you ain't getting any gifts. You've got to stir the gift up that's it's already in there. But you're not stirring it. You're too busy eating, too busy lusting, too busy watching TV, too busy passing gas, whatever you're doing. Stop it! Crave the gifts! You mean this is going to take some serious attitude adjustment on my part? Duh! Are you kidding? You've got to change now! Why? This world's going to hell in a handbasket, and you're the only person that will save your group of people. And when they die, their blood will be on your hands. God's not going to send somebody else to save the people you were called to save. You're not listening. You're called to do your work. He's not ever going to do your work. And on Judgment Day, you will give an account for your work, not the work he didn't do for you. Why is this good preaching? Because you wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't give a rat's ass. If you didn't give a flipping flap tonight, you would not be in this room with a couple of sessions. I mean, a couple of you got drug here. <laughs> but by and large, so help me God, you're here tonight, you want to make your life count. You don't want to die a spiritual loser. You don't want to live like that. And I believe that. I know that's true. So since you're motivated for these gifts, all I got to do is show you the little blueprint for them. You got to crave them. You got to have a broken heart. You got to have a servant's heart. You're going to get your gifts. You're not getting them from me. That's a Holy Ghost thing. I'm just sharing things. That's all. Why? How do I know that? Because you and you're neglecting your gift. Where's it at? It's already there. It's in there if you're backslidden. If it's in there, if, if it's in there, if you're living with somebody, you're living in sin, you're a serial adulterer, 
The gift is still in there. It's dormant. It's in there if you're relapsing. You're coked out of your mind. The gift is still in there. How do I know that? God, there it is. Same Greek word. Jesus had an unlimited metron. You and I have a metron portion. It's all given to you. You have it. Do. Well, I'm lukewarm right now. It's still in there. Everyone, everyone is given this grace according to the metron, the portion, the measurement of Christ. If you're a Buddhist, this doesn't apply to you. It's Christ, not Buddha. Jesus said, the works that I do are gone is works. It's not miracles, it's it's a catch-all phrase. It's a generic term. Argon. It means some kind of spiritual works. Who knows what it is? It could be anything. He breaks it down two ways here. Works that I'm doing and greater works. What are those greater? I do not know. I don't understand this verse. But here's the important part. If, if you can leave here tonight just focusing on I would like to do the works that Jesus was doing. We are going to be just fine. Okay? If the demons tell you, go have a Bible study on greater works, you're going to waste about six months on that poppycock. Then you're going to be back here with nothing. The heck difference does it make if you do a greater work than Christ? What does this look like? The Olympics? If you can do the same works of Christ, you're going to kill Maricopa County. Why? And it's all about not us getting glorified because we're, we are servants. See, servants don't run around. I'm on TV. If you do it, Jesus will do it for you. What's blocking your gifts? You've got to figure it out. Now pick one off this list and get rid of it tonight. Let's do it. We're going to do it at the healing service tonight. The downloading server. You're going to pick one of these in your heart, and we are going to remove it. I'll show you how to do that tonight. You can remove this stench from your soul tonight. What is it? What are you doing? What's blocking these gifts that are already in you? What's blocking your ability to crave these gifts? Give me these gifts. What's blocking it? Bad relationship, rotten spouse, crazy kids, divorces, childhood abuse. Find out what it is. Bad habit, habits, nasty habits. What is it? What's blocking these gifts? They're already in there. They're waiting to be released. They're there. You have to be perfect to receive the gifts. Now, this is very important. This section is very important. The answer to that question is no. How do I know that? Take a look at these pictures. These guys have had spectacular supernatural ministries. Uh, do you recognize these people? Anybody know that guy? Dallas, W.V. Grant, Jr. Anybody know that guy? A. Hey, Allen. What's, what's his problem? Tax evasion, prison. What's that guy? Died drunk in a hotel room in San Francisco. Who's that guy? Paul Kane, one of the great faith healers of the 40s and 50s. He went into the prophetic movement. What happened to him? Gay. Who did that? Todd Bentley. Lakeland and Bravo. What happened to him? Alcohol, adultery. Who did that guy? The Welsh Revival. Evan Roberts. This guy had an anointing that, unbelievable. What happened to him? Cracked up after a year. Died at home. Who'd that guy? Bill Branham. Bill Branham. Unbelievable. There wasn't a miracle he didn't see. What happened to him? Cracked up. Thought he was one of the two witnesses. 
Who's this guy? He invented, correct, Alexander Dowie. He invented healing in America. He founded what city? Zion, Illinois. <laughs> Whoa, what happened to him? Cracked up, thought he's one of the two witnesses. Who's that? Don't even answer. <laughs> Who that? Correct. Once a month, you know what they had in Los Angeles at Angeles Temple? Stretcher day. Everybody that was on a stretcher and couldn't walk brought the stretchers in, went home. What happened to her? Died in a hotel room. Oh, deed. Prescription drugs. Who's that? Jack Coe. Jack Coe is correct. He's teaching next week. <laughs> what happened to him? I don't know if there was a miracle he didn't see. What happened to him? Died in his 30s. Totally abused his body. Fat, out of shape, overeat, just no sleep. Gluttony, cracked up, died. Didn't, saw all the miracles. Had to have. Great guy. Who'd that guy? <laughs> Who's this guy? Oh, that's our own legendary who? Neil Frisbee. Capstone Auditorium. Uh, Tanner Mache. Guy had a wonderful healing ministry in the 40s and 50s. Wrote 5,000 books. What happened to him? Cracked up. Thought he's one of the two witnesses. I don't know why, but when people crack up, they think they're one of the two witnesses. I have no idea why that. I don't know why that is. I have no idea. Explain that to me. Do you have to end up a total failure to receive the gifts? Absolutely not. Who's that? Correct. Sister Edder, the most anointed woman that ever lived. Never, never uh, went into sin. Who did that? William Seymour. Finally, an incorrect answer. <laughs> Big Oldsworth. Yeah. Oh, right. There wasn't a miracle you didn't see. 16 resurrections. An illiterate plumber. Died in honor. Who's that? Catherine, Catherine Kuhlman. Yep. My God. Came from nothing. Concordia, Missouri. Broke. Totally rejected. No cosmetic appeal whatsoever. The homeliest minister that ever lived. God, man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. Mm -hmm. Catherine Kuhlman had a broken spirit. Well, when I still see her film, I still weep and cry. She has the anointing even though she's dead. <laughs> Why did she get that anointing? She had a broken heart. The Holy Ghost could trust her. Hallelujah. Who's that? The second correct answer, the great John Lake. The healing rooms today were founded by him. In Africa, they had over 100,000 documented healings. Who's that? W.V. Grant Sr. Guy had a spectacular healing. You know what he did in one service? Picked up a glass of water, held it out like that. Who wants to receive the baptism of the Spirit? About 15 people said, I do. Here. He throws the water on them. I've been thinking about developing this water throwing ministry. I've been thinking about it. But uh, because the carpet's so nice here, I didn't want to do it. But anyway, uh, they all burst out in the tongues. Just throwing water on people. My wife said, honey, can you get me a bucket? Now, who's this guy? That's the guy in Nigeria. This guy's... He's got miracles nobody has ever seen before. Okay. I've reached the portion I wanted to get to. <laughs> I knew I could do it. No, I didn't. Uh, I'm not going to shut the... I'm not quitting. Okay, I'm going on. If you have to leave now, you're dismissed. Nobody's leaving. All right. Listen. Listen to me. Please. God looks for... Common people, okay? He does not go looking president's row, royalty, no. What he does is he hunts around to find somebody everybody else thinks is a loser. He likes losers. <laughs> Our society is the opposite. They like 
Tony Robbins, a winner. Reach out for your dreams. God does, see, God does the opposite of what we think. He thinks the opposite of what we say, we think. He likes somebody everybody else has thrown in the trash can. And the eyes of the Lord go to and fro over the faith of the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who broken heart. See, not royalty, not money, not greatness. No. No. Why does he do that? I'm not sure, but one of the reasons I know is if your royalty You've already got this preset program in your brain that you're something special. People who are, have royalty think they're special by genetics. The Holy Ghost wants nothing to do with it. He wants some broken dude down here in tears. That's the guy he runs over for. Ready? All right. Here we go. For 18 years, you've been deaf in this ear. All right, your deafness is going to go right now. Is that right? That's right. God's going to open that ear up. You believe that with all your heart? Sure. Right now. Get ready. In my spirit, I feel this is going to be easy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, you devil that causes this ear to be closed. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's not going to be easy. It's stubborn. Everybody put your hand up and pray with me. This is interesting work, isn't it? Thou stubborn devil of deafness, I command you go from this ear in the name of Jesus Christ. Open in Jesus. Yeah. It's done. The demon flew Did right out of his head. Did you see that? It's done, folks. Wait a minute. It's done, isn't it? Just. Tell these people what you felt when it opened up. Who's that guy? A.L. That's A.A.L. and no. grew up in poverty, dirt shack, was an alcoholic in grade school, was a full-blown alcoholic by the time he hit junior high. Royalty? No. So you were short about an inch? What's, what'd you say about an inch, preach? The size blind. Do you believe when I pray for you right now, you'll see right now? Because Jesus is your healer? Okay. You blind devil, come out! In the name of Jesus Christ, right now. Recreate. Recreate. Don't let her fall out. Recreate. Blind eye, I command you, see in Jesus' name. Cover up your right eye, darling. Keep it covered real good. You ready to see? You ready to see? Yes. Yeah. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Now let me show you. Cover up your right eye. Cover it up good. How many fingers I got? Five. 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 
Somebody ought to give God a praise. Did you see that? The eye miracle was secondary. A grateful person was the miracle. You don't see that often. You know what you do see often? F the frozen chosen sitting around watching it. Did you see the people in the church there doing nothing? Those people should have been on their face, weeping when they saw a supernatural. Did you see how grateful that woman was? Listen, who is that guy? Who knows? That's you. That's you. You are supposed to be doing that for people who can't see. Look what it does to them. That girl was so healed. Not just her vision, her whole everything healed in her soul. Hurts and wounds, all gone. Who's doing that? You are doing it. You're called to do it. You. You. Who was that guy? Nobody knows him. Royalty? No. A servant? Yes. Well, that's just for him. No, it isn't. That's not just for him. That's for you. <laughs> Who's that guy? Mel Bond from Missouri. Every Saturday night he has a healing service. You want, what's amazing about that video? That paralyzed girl getting hit? No. There's no there was nobody in the church. <laughs> do you see what, how this is sunk? Do, do, does anybody have a grasp on Christianity in this country? It, it sucks so bad, I can't put it into words. That guy has a healing service every Saturday night. Those kind of healings occurring, and that church right there was half empty. Uh, well, at his church in Missouri, I don't know where it is. I can't remember. <laughs> Oh, thus saith the Lord, I will not mimic you. You must not mimic me. I am true to you. You must be true to me. I am here for one purpose, for you to glorify me. And as you glorify me, I will exalt you. You will praise me. I will give you honor. I will give you healing. I will give you another move in these days, saith the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we don't see this much Praise anymore. The name of the Lord. Tongues and interpretation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But anyway, they, this used to be big in the 70s. This happened all the time in charismatic in the 70s. Not, not too much anymore. The answer is yes. He wants you to have these gifts. He likes giving gifts. If you can just remove that lie from your mind that God is holding out on you, that he wants to give you these things, but there's something blocking it, and all we have to do is remove the blocker, and it fires through quickly. It comes to make a long story short there. Uh, that guy had multiple sclerosis and 
and got healed and went running around that church. And after that, everybody was screaming, and there was a mass run to the altar, and people were falling down on their faces, including that preacher. He went up on the stage and sat there <laughs> crying. That's Who was that guy? Dave Robertson from Tulsa. Why does God use him like that? He's got a broken heart. Why is God going to use you like that? Because you're going to develop a broken heart. Aren't you? You'll see miracles if you do. All right, I'll take one or two questions and then, yes. Sir? It seems like talking to Pastor Peter had bad endings, suicide, death, sin. Uh, it would appear to me that watching this very interesting and uh, that about half these people had bad ending they died in alcoholics or drug overdose or they they went insane and they had these gifts I mean I think everyone here would still want to have these gifts and they're, they're already in us they need to be programmed or rebooted or reblog whatever you want to put it but a lot of these people they had bad endings well is that a question Oh, an observation. Any particular reason why? Well, I don't know why they had bad endings, but my guess is that uh, when you have, which brings up a good point, if, if you get one of these gifts or more of them, you, you went on another list in the kingdom of darkness. Okay? You switch over to this list. This is the A list, the termination list, because... These gifts are our ticket to seeing America saved. We cannot see America saved by doing the church thing anymore. It doesn't work. Everybody knows it doesn't work. What church thing? Any church thing. You come in, you sit there, you sing, you put money in an offering, you go to your youth group, you went to Sunday school, you hear a preacher, you sing again, you'd have a doxal, you go home. That's not working. It's not working. You don't believe me? You don't believe me. There's 18 mega churches in Maricopa County. This is one of the most sinful, wicked counties in the country. The only way to stop this demonic slaughter is through the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal. It's time for little satellite outfits like this one to start recruiting disciples, training disciples. In the Great Commission, Mark 16, Matthew 28, the Bible does not say go into all the world and make Christians. It says make disciples. Amen. It does not say go into all the world and invite somebody to church. It doesn't say that. In America, we drifted off into the dead zone, and now we have nothing but sorrow to pay for it. In every church in this county, most of the people sitting in the pews are ill. The reason they're ill is because the Great Commission was thrown out, and this church program, what we have to do is stop it. You're fired. Who's fired? This pastor right over here, he's fired. That church board's fired. See? What we need to do is supernaturally go get Donald Trump and send him to every church in Maricopa County. And he just simply goes down the board, you're all fired. You're fired, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. What do we need? Spiritual weapons, not intellectual weapons. Let's print some more tracks and give them to... It's not working. Okay, we've spent billions on tracks. This isn't a helpful message. It is a helpful message. I'm telling you, this system has to stop now. What needs to be done? You. 
not your pastor, your board member, they're already sucked into the system. They're lost. You are here. You hear the truth here. You go do it. What do we do? Run in the churches and start yelling at them? Stupid. That's not going to work either. You'll alienate them. They'll turn on you. But I'll tell you what. You walk in with these gifts. You walk into the jail with these gifts. You get people in jail coming to your services. Isn't that right, sir? Nobody's going to argue with the moving of the Holy Ghost. They'll throw you out, but they can't argue with it. That's what it says in the Bible. Hey, what can we say about it? The guy's standing right here. Well, let's just yell at him and tell him not to preach this way anymore. Peter goes, should we listen to you or God? Maricopa County left God behind. Okay? We don't need any more pastors or church members. We don't need any more Christians. That's out. Christianity's out. What we need are disciples, hardcore fighters, warriors, people that will stand up and use not their intellect, but the moving of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Ghost crushes the devil's kingdom. Amen. To answer his question, yes, the devil will put you on that list when you activate your gifts. You already have them, but once they start manifesting and moving out of you, through you, you get moved over to the A list. See, right now you're on the your useless list. I got you. you. See, I, here's the failure list, and you're on it. When you move over to the A list, when these gifts start manifesting, whoa, somebody in the kingdom of darkness is going to spot it. And they're going to file a report on you over wherever they file their reports. But as far as I'm concerned, they can file a report up here. You are going to change. You are going to unchurch yourself. You're churched out. You're fired. Well, our youth group was going to Disneyland. It's nice. Fire your youth pastor. Cancel your trip to Disneyland. Let the other lukewarm, carnal, useless, gutless Christians go to Disneyland and fellowship. Okay? You line up for war. What's the consequences if you don't do it? All your relatives are going to burn in hell. Why? You're the only hope they've got. They're not here tonight. You are. Who's going to reach your relatives other than you? How are you going to reach them? By convincing them? Cry? No. The moving of the Spirit. These gifts speak for themselves. Our weapons are not carnal. This is a good sermon. It, it looks bad, but it's, it's really good. <laughs> you need more carnal Christianity like you need a second or third hole in your head. What we need here are fighters that don't see church like that anymore. They see it as a mission field. Your church is a mission, not a center of worship. They're not worshiping at your church. That's blasphemy. No, it isn't. Singing is not worship. You can sing while going over your grocery list. That's not worshiping. You go back to your church. You get these gifts. You activate them, and you use your church as a mission field. Well, I always wanted to be a missionary. Now's your chance. Because who's available at your church? Rows of mentally ill people. Rows of sick people. Rows of people that are stupid. Who's going to help them? You're the only one that can help them. Why? The God of this world has blinded the minds of those who are perishing. The churches are perishing. 
And God does not want that. You know why? He loves them desperately. He wants to heal them. He cares about them. Yeah, these people, some of these people, not hey, not any, everybody. And by the way, I picked these people out, so that's not a real, uh, that's no analysis at all. I just picked them out on my own. That doesn't mean that a certain percentage, it's got nothing to do with nothing. I was just picking people out to illustrate things. So who knows, there could have been 500 that didn't fail, and I just happened to pick these out because I was illustrating something. I wasn't criticizing them, I was just trying to encourage you through their failures that God doesn't hold gifts because somebody fails. That's what I was trying to do. I wasn't running them down. I like them. I understand them. Something's got to change. And the church board's not going to change. Now, your church is now your mission field. Yes, you'll go there, you'll pray for somebody, they'll get healed, something will happen. They'll throw you out. But Jesus said, once they throw you out of this one, kick off that dust and go into that church there. See, you, what are you doing? Find another place you worship? No, you're worshiping at home. You were worshiping as you entered, speaking in tongues. This is your mission field. Go to another church. Minister there for a while. They'll throw you out. You go to another one. See? And in glory, you'll be filthy rich. Yes. I'm going to pray now. Father, uh, sorry I skipped over some of this stuff tonight, but I didn't have, it, have enough time. I'm talking too much. But, Lord, there are many of your servants right here in this room tonight. And they've got good hearts. And they care. And they want to serve you. And there's some things blocking the manifestation of the Spirit. It's given to every man to profit with all. Every person in this room who is born again and a blood-bought Christian has one or more of these gifts in their spirit man. We know that. The Bible says that. I believe the Bible. And tonight I'm asking you, to remove this blockage and activate these gifts for your servants. And I'm asking you to send them back into the mission field. I'm asking you, Lord, use them mightily because that's their real heart's desire. Their real desire in life is not to die addicted to sex and drugs and food and everything else. Their real desire in life, that's what they really want, to serve you and do the right thing. They want to live a life that when they die, accounted for something for eternity, whether anybody knew their name or not. I know that, Lord. There's good people here, and they've got good hearts. You see their hearts much more than I do. And I'm asking you, Lord, this prayer service tonight, in the name of Jesus, activate these gifts. And I'm asking you to do whatever you have to do to them to get this thing to fire. In the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will bless my friends with traveling mercies and bring them back next Friday for God's holy word. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you have not received the activa activization. Is that the word? What did I say? Man, I'm exhausted. If you have not received something that begins with an A, <laughs> that means what? Yes, something's blocking it. In order to unblock that, you have to want it unblocked. The same thing's true of getting healed. Some people don't want to be healed. Some people like their demons. If I discover that, then I get rid of them quick. I can't afford to waste any of my time or energy on somebody that want, likes their demons and want to keep them and likes their sin and wants to keep it. We, we can't do that. And you can't do it either. When you, you're in the ministry. You will be in the ministry soon. 
and you're going to run into these time-sucking soul suckers. <laughs> and the demons will send them to you deliberately just to suck you dry. All they want is somebody to listen to. They have no true interest in repentance. They don't want to change, and they're not going to forgive that person. All right? Okay. Are you ready? The first thing you have to do is just take a big breath and close your eyes. Streamers, you do the same thing now. Just do exactly what I tell you. The Spirit of God's going to move on top of you here in a little bit. He's getting ready to make his move tonight. And he's going to hurt the devil real bad. What you got to do is just take a breath and relax. And let your body relax and let your mind slow down just a little bit. Just like that. And when the anointing starts to come on you, you'll, you'll, you may hear somebody cough or something. Those are spirits coming out. Don't worry about that. Don't focus on what that other person's doing. Okay, this is your night to open your heart and to break your heart before God. And you're agreeing to do that. Tonight you agree in the name of Jesus to stop listening to demons. Anything they say to you, negative, come out Satan. Anything they say to you that's positive, anything they say to you that's negative, anything that's flattering, any explanation for anything they give you, come out Satan. Any lies they're speaking to you, anything a demon has to say to you is to be rejected. Come out. Is to be rejected from A to Z. You are to receive. There they go. There they go right now. Now just take a breath and relax. Father God, I have your children here tonight. Some of them have secret sins in their hearts, and they are going to repent of them right now. Some of them have bitterness from childhood toward relatives, parents, friends, neighbors. Some of them have addiction demons. They're addicted to eating. They're addicted to drinking. They're addicted to drugs. They are addicted to porn. They're addicted to lust. Tonight, those spirits are to be bound in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Evil spirit of lust blocking the anointing in this child of God. I'm speaking to you right now. Evil spirit of lust, uncontrollable behaviors, uncontrollable eating and drinking. I am speaking to you right now, you evil spirit. And I command you in the name of the Lord to loose this child of God, this vessel of the anointing, this vessel of the gifts, evil spirit of lust, you drug addict demon, you alcoholic demon, I command you in the name of Jesus, every spirit of lesbianism, bisexuality and homosexuality hiding in your soul tonight is to be bound and every sexual perversion demon in your body is to come out tonight. You will not leave here tonight with a sexual perversion demon blocking your anointing. That will not happen. Come out now in the name of the Lord. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Any of you involved in witchcraft, witchcraft, sorcery, Ouija boards, horoscopes, shriners and masons, any evil wickedness from your grandparents, your great-grandparents, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are to come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Right now, in the name of the Lord. Come out right now. Every occult spirit in this room blocking the child of God's anointing and their gifting and the gifts of the spirit. You are commanded by the blood of Jesus, the cross of Calvary. You are bound in Jesus' name. Come on now. You are bound in Jesus' name. Now start praying just like me. Just pray just like me right now. Use your faith and use your anointing just like this. Satan, I command you to release my anointing. I command you to release my giftings right now. I command this, this root of bitterness to come out of my soul. Every person in this room, there's one, there's one, there's one who has self-disgust and self-hatred in their hearts from childhood. 
There's another one. There's one there. There's one there. Every person in this room who deep down in their soul does not like themselves, you are going to repent of that right now. There's another one. There's one there. Every person in this room right now who does not like themselves, every person who hates themselves right now, you repent of it. The Holy Spirit loves you dearly. You do not have any legal right to hate yourself. Father loves you unconditionally. He wants to help you unconditionally. You said, well, the Lord failed me here and he failed me there. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. The demons told you he failed you. He lied. They lied. Everybody's lying. It's all lies. He did not fail you. Something was blocking your miracle. Something was blocking your healing. Now, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command this spirit to come out of my body right now. I command this blockage to come out of my soul right now. I repent of hating myself. I repent of hating myself right this moment, right now. Come on now, just speak it out, just like me. Just whisper it. Start whispering. I command this sense of nothingness I have about myself to leave me now. I command this evil spirit of cowardice, this coward spirit in my body that refuses to allow me to worship. It refuses to allow me to pray. It refuses to allow me to preach and teach. It causes me fear of public scorn. I bind this spirit of Delia, this spirit of a coward, and I command it to come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Come on now, just cast it out of your body. I command this evil spirit that causes me to criticize and nitpick other people. I am criticizing, nitpicking, teaching, instructing, and telling other people what to do all the time. That is a demon of insecurity. I command that spirit of insecurity that keeps telling me I got to tell somebody what to do and how to do it and when to do it and do it this way and then do it that way and it's got to be done my way. That demon of insecurity is bound and must come out of your body right now. Come on, just cast it out. Insecurity, come out of me. Those of you who have been in long-term bad marriage and you have had an abusive, verbally abusive spouse. And that verbally abusive spouse has cut scars into your soul. Tonight, you are going to release those scars to God. Come on, streamers. Your husband and your wife is verbally abusive. Your wife is a nagger. She's got a big mouth. She's always talking, saying something negative or stupid. Your husband is a control freak. He's got a big mouth. He uses cursing and swearing to intimidate and control you. But tonight, you are going to remove those wounds from your soul. Streamers, you just put your hand on your stomach. Put your hands on your stomach. Take a big yawn and command that spirit. Use your mind. Scream at the demons in your mind. Use your mind. Satan, I hate you. Satan, I'm rebelling against you. I'm turning on you right now. You are going to release my gifts and my anointing tonight. You're going to release my healing. You're going to release my addiction. That thing is going to come out tonight. Your first husband was a verbally abusive person, and he ripped you to death. He said every negative thing he could. He was a control freak. He was a narcissist. And he kept saying negative things. And they left you scarred. They left your soul wounded. And now you've shut down emotionally. You can't cry anymore. You can't express yourself anymore. You can't laugh with childlike joy anymore. You are broken. You are a broken person because your parents, your spouse, your brothers and sisters, somebody kept verbally abusing you. Tonight, you are to be healed. Tonight, you are to be healed. If you were verbally abused as a child, if you're verbally abused, come down and stand by this fan here so we can pray for you. If you have scars on your soul from verbal abuse, mother, father, husband, wife, something, anything, and you want those scars removed, 
come down here on my left, over here, so we can pray for you tonight to remove those ugly scars. Your father ripped you up one side and down the other. Your mother nagged you and nitpicked you and criticized you to the point you can't believe it. You were so criticized that you left wounded. You sense that you are less than a man, less than a woman, that you are deficient. That is a soul wound. The Holy Spirit will remove your soul wound tonight. You can be healed tonight. Come down here on my left. If you were verbally abused in a previous marriage, you had two verbally abusive marriages. <clears throat> You need to be healed. Come down in Jesus' holy name. If you've got secret lusts hiding in your body, come down here on my right. Come down here to the front on the right. You've got lust problems. You need to be healed tonight so your anointing can flow, so your gifts can manifest. You've been called by God to be a faith healer. You've been called by God for the gift of prophecy. You've been called by God because you have a sensitive spirit. You lost it all because the familiar spirits saw your sensitive spirit and they came and got you first. Well, tonight, the familiar spirits of religion and church come out of your body tonight. Come on, come down right now, over here. If you have a spirit of lust that's driving you crazy, you can't stop doing something. You're out of control. You come down for prayer tonight. You can't stop doing something. You're out of control. Come down tonight in Jesus' holy name. If you have a soul tie with someone who's killing you, you know you shouldn't be with that person. You know you shouldn't get back together with that spouse. You know you shouldn't be around that person from childhood, a friend, a relative, something, because they are causing you to sin. You have an ugly, stinking soul tie driving you to sin by you. The devils are using another person, and you're stuck to that person. You'd like to get rid of them, but you can't. Something keeps drawing you back into that ugly relationship. Please come down so we can pray for you tonight. We will break that ugly soul tie in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you have not received your gift of tongues, your glossa, that is something that was bought and paid for you at the cross of Calvary. It has a thousand good benefits. You're supposed to be using your gift. If you have never received your gift of tongues, please come down so we can pray for you. In the name of Jesus, and pray and see you healed.